What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put Into Geek, and today we're taking a look at this right here. This is the Donner PC-02 audio workstation for podcasting, for live streaming, for independent use. You don't even need to hook up a computer to it. We're going to talk about that next on Geekazine. The Donner PC-02, it is a audio workstation. It's got four channels to it. It's got extra sound so you can do fun little things like this and have, you know, have some fun with a, with a different soundboard. But the best part is you don't need to hook it. You can hook it up to the computer and use it with your DAW. But you don't need to. You can actually have this set up as a standalone device. And that's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to start with the unboxing. So let's get into that. So let's go ahead and let's get this opened up. So I think this slides open. Do that, do that. There we go. And bring this up. There we go. Look at that. All right. From here, we got a create the moment plate. And on the back, this is basically going to be your little guide as to what you can do with this thing. So keep this quick start guide close by. We got the unit and we got a little box right here. Let's pull out the box first, open it up. We got our USB cable and then this looks like the power supply. And then of course we got the unit right here in foam underneath. We do have a user manual. We'll just uh, show you that. We'll put this back in. So we'll just take out the plastic and bring this out Shoop, like that. There we go. Look at that. Let's take a look at the face here. We've got four main faders. There are three bank buttons here. And what this does, this allows you to set up preset some of settings. So let's say you have podcast day, which is three people. You can hit it to bank one. And what it'll do is it'll move this like this. It'll actually move the sliders. I'll show you in a minute. And then you can do your podcast. And then let's say you're doing a music thing. You got your, your instrument, you hit bank two. And all of a sudden it brings these down and then sets it up for your vocals and your instrument. And then bank three, it's a different podcast. You have it, something like that. We have the sampler button. These are all samples that are completely changeable. So you have like applause and boos, but you can put in your own samples. We got mutes and solo buttons, just like with a regular mixer. So if you really want to dial in the uh, bass guitar or the guitar for that matter, you can hit solo and do that. Uh, over here we have the record play buttons and then of course the system buttons we have two dials up on top then that'll control right here over here we have a bunch of led lights uh displays that'll tell you if you've got your eq on if you got the reverb on or anything like that these are all the headphone volume dials let's uh take a look at the sides here nothing in the front nothing on the side nothing on this side simple information on the bottom everything you need to know and use is going to be on the back of this thing. Channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. These are dual plugs. So you can put in a microphone, what's called an XLR or an instrument cable or what's called a TRS cable. We've got the line out, which can go out to another computer or anything like that, especially if you're live streaming. We've got a line in. So let's say you have uh, you have some music coming in here. The main outs, these are balanced. They could go to a mixer. They could go to speakers. They could go to something else. Four sets of headphones. Notice that these are T, well, these would be TRRS, stereo uh, headphones. Uh, but notice that they are quarter inch. They're not eighth inch. So you'll need adapters if you've got only eight inch adapter headphones. USB-C right here, that takes you to the computer. We've got an optical cable. If you want to send a TV monitors, it will have an optical cable or stereo receivers will have optical. So you can use that as well. This is the uh, micro SD or TF card, however you want to say it. Uh, this is meant for your recording. Once again, you can use this as a standalone if you wanted to. We've got the 12 volt right there. And then of course the power button like so. And with that, we're going to go ahead and plug this in. With the USB, of course, you're going to have to have uh, some software to install on the computer. We have that software set up. We'll go ahead and turn this on. <laughs> I love it. Let's do that again. It's pretty cool. Here it is, <laughs> is right here. Uh, all the everything's lit up as you can see. So now we can see the banks. We've got bank one, bank two, bank three. See how that moved? 
So showing you a little bit of stuff here. Uh, we got our effects button, we've got our sampler button, we got our Bluetooth if we want to pair up a, uh, a phone or another device, record what we're doing, play what we're doing, the system button that gives you the brightness. This is not a touch screen, by the way. You're using this dial to move everything. And then if you want to, like for instance, bring in the TF card, there you go, bring it down. We're gonna format that card, confirm that format, boom. We can do a whole bunch of setup right here through this uh, this area right here. And then of course we got the main volume right here. There's three banks of nine buttons. That means 27 different buttons. So we got, we're on bank one, bank two. Bank one has preset sounds. You can change those out. Bank two, nothing's set up yet. Bank three, we've got actually four sounds that are set up. This is anything coming in from that line in. I thought this was an overall, but I always guess I was wrong. Here is software. I'm going to switch over to this microphone that I'm going to plug in. Got a simple XLR cable and I'm going to plug it in here and then I'm going to plug in an instrument in that second channel and then we're going to do a quick setup. Now first of all it plugged in so it recognized that there's something in there but it doesn't know what it is. It's assuming it's a dynamic microphone but we can definitely switch it out. Uh, it can hear the microphone, me talking, so we can change the gain to what we want, but we want to get the volume to kind of hit inside this green box uh, for our audio. And of course we can pan left or right if we want to. So we're done on that, that looks good. And so works if I want to hit solo, that mutes all the other, see how that worked? Same thing with the mute, watch this. That's down to nothing. So, so if I have this like this and I mute it and I bring it back, it's gonna remember the last setting that it's at. Let me show you how this software looks. So the, this is used for a lot of their programs. So this is what happens when you call up the PCO2. I can actually control all of these sliders and you're not seeing this, but it's actually moving the slider on here. So if I move this here, you see how it's moving that one? How cool is that? <laughs> so I have all the controls through this PC app. Unmute it. I'm plugged it into here. We're going to switch it up to guitar bass and hit that button and bring up the volume on the bass. We're hitting the numbers as, like I said, with my, my vocals. Now these other two channels we won't worry about too much, but let's go ahead and get this all set up. Now, now you can, you can hear, hear it. it. You got, you got that. that. And now you're not hearing from that microphone. You're hearing from this microphone. I want to turn up and down headphones. I can do that from here. Another thing I can do is I got the effects. So if we go to reverb, we can turn reverb on, we can turn reverb off. We got echo, we have delay, we have send and we have electron, whatever that is. So with delay, uh, we can turn on, on, on and off and delay, on, delay like that. With reverb, on with the reverb and you notice how that lit up and uh, so you can see that we have the send so how much reverb do you want to put in each channel so in this case we should be able to take this and bring that bass down to nothing and then an fx so we can do an auto tune we can do a pitch shift we can do a megaphone this this would be the megaphone right here and then let's see, we got robot. I'm talking like a robot. Robots talking like me. I don't have enough hands. I'm a robot and I don't have enough hands. I need more hands because I'm a robot. Robot needs hands. Let's turn that off. All right. And then let's do auto tune. We can set this up to the key. So the thinking is in key of C, so we could go to key of F. And then we can do flex tune. And that really depends on how much, how much you want that sound. If you want to change your pitch, 
Turn that on, and then all of a sudden I sound like a chipmunk. I can go down, down like this, go up, up like this, this, and down. And I can even mix it. So if I want to go, let's say, a step up here and then mix it with my regular voice, then you can go back and forth. You get the idea. I don't see anything for, let's say, a dyna I'll go dynamic. So now we've got the gate and the EQ set up on channel two. So if I play the bass a little bit. You get the idea of what's going on. We can also, let's also change that back to no effect. These are all the preset buttons that we have. First, this is the first one, which is a red button. Simple sound. You can turn it off. You can tap it once to turn it on, tap it off twice, uh, the second time to turn it off. Got a little bit of applause there, thank you. We'll find that's a little bit of laughing. It sounds like some sort of rumble or something. <laughs> that's too bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's that might be a copyright sound. That's the sad trombone sound. Somebody kissing. <laughs> Alright. So all these banks on bank two are nothing there. This one. Oh, this one actually turns on some of the effects of the, we're on robot right now. And then this is the pitch shift. And then this is the megaphone. And then finally, uh, this is the auto-tune. Let's auto-tune. We're auto-tuning my sound. Auto-tuning my sound now. Auto-tune and auto-tune in my sound. Auto-tune my sound now. Yeah, so that's auto-tune. And of course you can control your own. There's a sampler button, there we go. Now this, you can see it up here, there's the, uh, there's the pads. We're gonna go in and we're gonna change this one. Well, first of all, we're gonna change its color. Let's go blue, like the blue. Sample sound, we can choose effect or sample sound. We'll do sample sound. And we could choose to loop it, we can choose to do it once or we could fade it out. Yeehaw. Now, if I hit this button. Yeehaw. There we go. We can choose to loop it. Yeehaw. And it's looping that. We can set it up to fade. So when I get to yeehaw, it's gonna fade out. Yeehaw. And then it'll play once, so. And then of course we can delete it or be done. We'll give it a yellow. And we'll do a quick effect. And we'll go robot. Because I like the robot voice. I hit the button. Now we're in robot. In the robot. In the robot. In the robot, 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 in the robot. There we go. So that was the robots. We could I've been playing with this for a, a little while now, and here are some thoughts. I definitely want to put this into my workflow because I, this is a pretty decent board. I'm hoping that there's going to be a few updates that come to it that really make it a board that'll match some of these other devices that are out there, the audio workstations that are out there that do the exact same thing. First of all, I was a little bit confused on the patterns and especially it started with the effects because I turned on the effects and I turned on the reverb and then it put reverb across the board. Eventually I found there's an area where you can uh, set a lot of reverb or a little bit of reverb for these uh, for these devices. So uh, once I had that set up, then I was able to uh, configure that. The next confusing part is through the software right here. So I've been using the software trying to figure out how to put in the different sound samples. And in fact, I put in the Wilhelm scream. That's this sound right here. Ah! 
basically what I did was I took out all the sound samples and then put in my own. I kept a couple of them, like a cheering. That's pretty straightforward. But I, I wanted you know, like this is this is one I created. Uh, I found that in bank three, these are like this is the robot sound. sound. I found that no matter what I tried, I could not remove these four buttons. So I'm not exactly sure why. Hoping that's just a small little glitch that needs that gets fixed with a, a future update. I was able to take off a lot of stock buttons, move some of the stock buttons around, and then of course, put on my own stock buttons. Make sure if I had this up all the way, then it would be super loud. That's the other thing is this E, uh, which controls these sounds. I would rather have this switch this E to something else. In fact, as you can see on the mixer, there's all four microphones or inputs. Then you have the audio link. We have the Bluetooth. We have all these different audio. There's a game one. There's an optical one. Uh, there's all these. And then the soundboard. I'd rather have that deal with maybe the Bluetooth rather than that. And I don't I can't find a way to say, OK, this one over here. And of course, I have no faders over here. So that's that's a small little uh, nuance there that I would really love to see in maybe a future update. Going through the buttons, I kind of wish this was a little touch screen. We got the two main dials. Everything controls through here, which is great. And uh, and I don't have any problems with that. Headphones, they work really well. Uh, there is no way to merge the controls. So what I hear in my headphones, you guys don't hear. I mean, I can hear the robot, I can hear the megaphone, but if I, if I mute this right and I just said, you can't hear me, but I still can. The whole point is that it'd be nice to actually match exactly what the fader, what's happening with the faders, especially with this thing right here, because I had this all the way up to the top and then I hit this button and it just completely blew out people's ears probably. But then I turned this down to about here and then did the Wilhelm screen and I could actually talk over the Wilhelm screen. But that's another reason why I'd love to have this this E as music rather than the soundboard, because ultimately this is going to stay right at that level for the soundboard. I need it to duck what I'm doing. And that's the next thing that this is missing, some sort of ducking system. Other than that, everything else works pretty well. Uh, I mixed a few things, had a lot of fun with it, brought in some music, we brought in some samples, we took out some samples, easy peasy, no problem right there. So those are the pros and cons with the PCO2. But I wanna find out what you guys think about the PCO2. Let me know down in the notes, and uh, of course, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, and bell notification so you know when the next video comes out so that is the donner pco2 audio workstation thanks a lot for watching you guys geek out and uh cheer on oh that's a laugh don't laugh at me oh man